Uh, it has been very humbling to see staff uh, willing to come on board immediately and then progressively to support the work of the university. It's, uh, it is humbling and uh, people have made amazing sacrifices so on behalf of all of us let's uh, acknowledge that and I expect we'll see more leadership, more people stepping, stepping up to assist but we are very sensitive as Rod has said to the fact that not everyone is ready to do that and I suspect some of you have come even here today at some cost to your families and personal lives so thank you on behalf of us all. We have been working hard on the academic restart. We are here for students obviously, that's our core business. Our students are anxious to hear from us and it has been very frustrating for students not to have had a pre precise description of the arrangements that we have in place to restart our undergraduate and postgraduate teaching. We have of course put on the website a bit of a trajectory for what we're planning to do and we've set the SNT and the deans and the academic groups have set themselves a, a huge target of getting an announcement ready to go to students by 8 o'clock on Monday. That will not be a complete announcement but I hope it'll be sufficiently comprehensive to reassure all of our students that we have not been idle in the last week or so, that we have been thinking carefully about the logistics of preparing our undergraduate at different levels, the programs and postgraduate restart. And I think that we will have enough available for Monday to show all of our community that there is a prospect of getting a complete delivery of a quality program by the end of the year. Sue has already indicated that the first thing that became obvious was that because of the very careful evaluation of our teaching facilities, we will um, need to have temporary teaching facilities in the arts car park project is the first part of the solution of that. But our teams are certainly prioritising our main lecture theatres as well. And if and when they're certified, we will occupy those using the safe routes approach uh, and opening up progressively parts of the campus uh, once we're sure it's safe. Now, we do believe that uh, the plan can include delivery of uh, academic programs from the 14th, but we have to be really realistic that unlike September, where after a period of closure and a pretty much complete return of staff in the week before we started lectures, we will have to make this a progressive process. And that over the days uh, from the 14th, we will start to teach as best we can to the largest number of students. In talking to staff and thinking about your leadership roles as academic leaders, heads of departments, uh, leaders of uh, support teams, we do need your input and advice over the next few days about what is reasonable. And as Rod has said, we're very concerned not to upset people by placing unreasonable demands on them. And I know there'll be a big mix of, of how that is affecting people, so we need your help to make sure that we don't lift expectations to breaking point with some of our teachers. Again, uh, it's unrealistic to expect people to be teaching and researching if they still have nowhere to live or their families are still disrupted. It, it is going to be different. The world of delivering teaching at this university, particularly for the next three months, so we'll need to think outside the square, we will need to be creative, and we'll need to accept that our traditional methods of delivery as beautifully formed as we know them to be, will have to be amended and changed. We'll have wonderful access, of course, online to those library resources that we had last time, all of those offers. It looks as if Sue is uh, getting back on stream, so there'll be that uh, online access to material. And we will have to be flexible in terms of the numbers of people that can be accommodated in different venues, but we recognise that there will need to be tutorials and study groups and things where people can actually have that human content. Just whacking the whole curriculum online is not going to be a takeaway solution. We are very much aware that our laboratories may take a little bit longer to reconfigure and check, and so there may need to be shifts within the program, within the semester, in terms of when the laboratory work is delivered uh, over the number of weeks before the end of semester one. We are trying to hold fast to a goal which is to open semester two as normal on the 11th of July. Now I see no reason as I stand here today why that couldn't be done, uh, but as Rod has said we need to hear back from you about any risks to that, but it would give the strongest possible message to our community internally that we're back on deck uh, for the 2nd of July. And there is a bit of compression time. 
I was absolutely astonished and humbled with the way in which people repackaged their programs uh, after the September event. Now obviously this has had a greater impact on us all, but if we think about what's right for students, engage the students in the planning as we did in a very comprehensive way in September, I think we will get there. But there will need to be a number, a range of solutions, and those of you in different faculties will know uh, what the building blocks are, what is the quality that has to be delivered by the end of uh, the semester break, semester one, and how you can work with us. Uh, the students are being fantastic. You've seen the heroic stories of students and the, and the silt moving. The students are now ready to talk to us about the deliverables and what they need. Their communities are in touch with them, and I think we can get feedback from them and advice and input about how to get this right. We've heard uh, from Rod briefly about the study abroad arrangements that have been put in place for Adelaide. There have been offers from almost every Australian university to take some of our students. It's quite hard to get a package together in a few days, but the Adelaide thing speaks to a huge commitment from our staff and from Qantas Airways to put together a package to get that first plane load in Adelaide. We don't want that to signal that we can't deliver a program here. It's one of a range of probably dozens of options that will be in place, but at the preservation of our learning community is absolutely critical to the future reputation of this university. So any student that is in another place for a period of time, we need them to feel that UC did everything possible to stay in touch with them, to understand their needs, and put in place a range of options that was acceptable to them. I've been delighted to learn that at almost all of these universities that are helping us, they are not looking to charge fees, they are treating this as an exchange arrangement, and as soon as it's, we're ready to get the students back, they'll be coming back, hopefully having had a rich uh, and engaging experience elsewhere. I hope by the end of today that most of our New Zealand University colleagues will have agreed to take our students in varying numbers on that basis. And we're very pleased indeed with uh, the signatures that we've got on those agreements from Auckland, Massey and AUT. I believe that everyone will see that this is a common sense approach and there may be uh, some students then going uh, for the first semester to some of those other universities, but coming back here uh, to continue their studies and to graduate in due course with a University of Canterbury degree. There have been a lot of questions about research and about uh, postgraduate students, so just to deal with both of those before I finish. Uh, in terms of research, uh, I believe that it will be tough to get research up and running, and I do believe that our initial priority is to focus on student teaching requirements. But everyone is aware of things like the PBRF and the distance, and research is critical to our mission, so we will start to put together some thinking around research and first, of, first and foremost, of course, will be our postgraduate students. So we have had contact with them initially. The feedback around the September flexibility that we developed and showed uh, promulgated was that we got it pretty right. We gave extensions, we tried to extend scholarships uh, as best we could so that the students would have a clear pathway through to completion of their research uh, work here at the university. There may be difficulties with laboratories, as I mentioned in terms of teaching, but also obviously for research. And we've been very pleased to get offers from other universities around New Zealand and our CRI colleagues about the possibility of providing access to postgraduate uh, research facilities for our postgraduate students to carry on their research, perhaps at another venue for a time, if we can't provide immediate access to their laboratory. So Lucy Johnson will be leading that. Lucy's done a great job of getting in touch, I think, with all supervisors and the majority of students, and she will be uh, uh, constantly in touch with them and will be working with our insurers to try and provide a definitive statement <coughs> about fees and scholarships uh, as soon as we can get uh, that information back from them, and Jeff Field will be coordinating that with Lucy. There have already been questions raised about PBRF and uh, you know, it's not a high priority for us as we stand here today, but as we do get back, I'm sure that all staff will be mildly anxious about PBRF. Fortunately, the TEC have asked for advice from us about that. They have asked the three universities in this region with uh, 
um, research staff, particularly Lincoln, University of Otago, Christchurch and ourselves, for us to give them some advice about what we should do about PBRF. And I welcome your input into that process if you have ideas and suggestions. But we have had a teleconference uh, this morning to discuss that and we will be giving advice to the TEC about considerations that won't disadvantage our staff or this university in regard to PBRF. So I um, uh, am on email. I have uh, channels of communication open directly if you have thoughts, advice, uh, creative solutions to academic delivery, then please just email me. We'll immediately integrate those thoughts and ideas. You'll have much better ideas than just what the senior management team can come up with. So I look forward to hearing from you individually or collectively. And thank you for in advance for the work you'll do with your deans and PVCs and faculty leaders uh, to get a university back up and running. Thank you very much.